Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emmanuel Mobodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the UK. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in the NHS as a specialist biomedical scientist. And for many years, I have helped a number of people secure their dream job as a specialist biomedical scientist and also as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you to navigate through interview questions and thereby increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. I ask that you like, share, comment and subscribe our page. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone again. Um, yes, it's me again. Um, so today I've decided to do some short, short videos, okay? And one of the things I want to do today is the common question they ask. <laughs> and what is it? What mistake have you made in the past? What did you learn from it? And how did you correct it? One of the you know common questions they ask, okay? The answer is this. Such questions, don't try to answer them like saying, I've made this. No, just give example. Okay, thank you very much. For so many years practicing as a biomedical scientist, I've made some couple of uh, mistakes, which of course I've learned and that, has, and that has helped me to increase my understanding about the practice and increase my experience. For example, that is important. For example, okay. Answer those kind of questions with example, and I'm going to give you some of the answers. And the answers I'm going to be giving you, I'm going to be using hematology, but you can make things up in biochemistry or microbiology. I'll give you an example. I've taught you guys about uh, maybe race MCHC, that is high MCHC, that it could be due to coda glutenin, it could be to, due to lipemic sample, or it could be due to hereditary spherocytosis. You can use that. That's an example. You can say, for example, that as, there was a day you were working on the bench and there was a high MCHC, but, you know, you didn't really know the meaning, okay? So you released that result, but you didn't know that that high MCHC has actually affected the red blood cell indices. And as soon as you release the result, within five minutes that day, a doctor called, okay? The doctor seen the patient called the lab and query that result. Then your seniors approach you, your senior approach you and ask you why should you release that result and you didn't understand what you've done wrong. But your senior then lets you know that look at the MCHC is high, that means that this red cell indices is not correct. That, that this could be due to lipemic sample, coda glutenin or hereditary spherocytosis. That your senior now told you that what you need to do then is to at least warm the sample to confirm whether it is coda glutenin or then spin it down if it is not to check whether it is lipemic sample that yes after that you apologize and you want the sample it was coda glutenin because that then correct and the, everything became normal that that was a mistake that you made you felt bad about it and since then you have learned from it and you have encountered a number of such cases and you've been able to handle it very well simple Okay, that's the answer to that. Now you can also decide to drag that story and say, oh yes, you, you warm it and it didn't correct. Then you spun it down and it was like a sample. And of course you learn from, so you can give such example. Okay. Another thing you can decide to give as an example is maybe in terms of, you could say for an example that on this occasion, you, there was a RNR result. Okay. That that RNR result was about 6.5. Just make it, just make a number up. Just know that 5.0, you need to phone it, right? Good. So you can say that Anna result was about 6.5. And you just released the result. And that was all you did. And when you released the result, and after some time that, you know, you didn't know that the doctors have not seen the result, and they call the lab and say, what about this result? That this patient, they really need to see the Anna result of this patient. And before you could know what was happening, your senior came and approached you and said, oh, but this result has been released. Did you phone it? You said you did not phone it, okay? Then you were told off, okay? And you learn from it, and you also understand why you need to phone high INR because the patient may be bleeding to death. And that's why you need to phone it because it means that the dosage of, dosage of the warfarin is high. That such result is very important that you phone it. That again, that was what you learned, okay? And that was the mistake you made, and that was what you learned from it, you know? So that's the kind of answer you should give on things like that, okay? 
Another question like this I will make to add this up will be sometimes they will ask you, tell us, how have you, how have you acted as a good team player in the past? Very simple. That's also example you need to give to them. You say in the past you've been able to act as a good team player because you understand your role as a biomedical scientist that it has to do with working together with other colleagues. That on this occasion, a member of staff approached you and said, I don't understand why the red blood cell indices is very abnormal. And the person don't know what to do. Then when you look at the, the red blood cell indices, you realize that you now saw that MCHC was high. You told your colleague that, oh, this could be due to codaglutilin. Have you considered warming the sample up? That, that your colleague at that time did not consider that. But you did, so they said that to your colleague and he, she warmed the sample or he warmed the sample up and lo and behold, you know, everything corrected. That that way you have acted as a good team player. Okay? You can also decide on another occasion to say, a colleague of yours was looking at a blood film and he was not sure, she was not sure what she was seeing or what he was seeing on the blood film, whether it was a blast cell or not a blast cell. So he called your attention and you look at it, lamb, behold, it was really a blaster. In fact, it was a blaster that when you counted, you counted about maybe 15% of 30 just make things up, okay? So you counted that and you did reassure that your colleague that this is definitely blast cells, that that way you've also played as a good team player. You can also say that on this occasion, you've done a number of night shifts, late shifts, so you are tired, you are supposed to take your annual leave, but a member of staff was sick and you were pleaded to come and cover that shift and you cover the shift, that that way you have also played as a good team player. So these kind of questions, please, use example that is the secret of it finally sometimes they will ask you something like oh you realize that a member of staff was non confirmant okay that you notice a non confirmant from a member of staff what are you going to do i tell you what these questions personally it affects me because it's not my kind of person but i'm gonna tell you the actual answer okay the actual answer is that you need to report it to your senior that's the actual answer. But sometimes you could decide to go this way. You can say, okay, you are going to speak to the person, okay? And let the person know about the non confirmant okay? And hopefully that will not repeat again. But if that repeats again, then you, of course you are going to let this, a senior member of staff to know about it. That why you are going to do that is because the senior member of, of staff may then determine whether the person requires further training on that matter okay then you can say in the meanwhile once you notice that you are going to make sure that you correct that and do what is everything that is necessary to be done so to make sure that the laboratory is within confirmance okay so that's the answer to that this kind of questions they are you know cheap questions they ask but give them the answer correctly thank you very much again my name is dr manuel Lebodo. see you again bye